Modern Psychodynamic Theories Modern psychodynamic theories have evolved from the original ideas of Sigmund Freud, who is often considered the father of psychoanalysis. Freud's theories emphasize the role of the unconscious mind in shaping behavior, the importance of early childhood experiences, and the influence of internal conflicts on personality. While many of Freud's ideas have been modified or expanded upon, the core concept remains. Human behavior is driven by unconscious forces that we are not fully aware of, and these forces affect how we think, feel, and act. In the early days, Freud believed that the unconscious mind was a reservoir of repressed thoughts, feelings, and memories, especially those related to conflict and anxiety. He argued that these repressed elements could still influence a person's conscious behavior, often manifesting in the form of neuroses or other psychological symptoms. Freud's original model of the mind divided it into three parts, the ID, ego, and superego. The ID was the part of the personality that contained our most basic desires and drives, such as hunger, sex, and aggression. The ego acted as the rational part of the mind, negotiating between the unrealistic demands of the ID and the moralistic pressures of the superego. This internal conflict, according to Freud, was at the heart of human behavior. Modern psychodynamic theories build upon these foundational ideas but also integrate more recent developments in psychology and other scientific disciplines. Unlike traditional Freudian psychoanalysis, which focused heavily on sexuality and aggression, Modern psychodynamic approaches take a broader view of human motivation and development. They recognize the importance of relationships, emotions, and social factors in shaping the unconscious and overall personality. One key figure in modern psychodynamic theory is Carl Jung, who developed what he called analytical psychology. Jung agreed with Freud that the unconscious played a crucial role in behavior, but he believed that Freud's model was too limited. Jung introduced the idea of the collective unconscious, which he said was a shared, universal aspect of the unconscious mind, common to all people. According to Jung, the collective unconscious contains archetypes, which are universal symbols or themes, such as the hero, the mother, or the shadow. These archetypes influence our behavior and experiences, often in ways we do not realize. Jung also placed a greater emphasis on the concept of individuation, which is the process of integrating different parts of the self to become a whole, balanced person. For Jung, this was the key goal of personal development. He believed that psychological health comes from a balance between the conscious and unconscious aspects of the mind, as well as between opposing traits like introversion and extroversion. Another influential figure in modern psychodynamic theory is Eric Erikson, who developed the psychosocial theory of development. Erikson expanded on Freud's ideas, proposing that personality develops in a series of stages throughout life, not just in early childhood. He identified eight stages of psychosocial development, each characterized by a specific conflict or crisis that individuals must resolve to move on to the next stage. For example, in adolescence, the key conflict is between identity and role confusion. Erickson believed that how we resolve these conflicts shapes our personality and influences how we interact with others. Modern psychodynamic theories also emphasize the importance of early relationships, particularly with caregivers. Psychologist John Bowlby developed attachment theory, which suggests that our early attachment experiences with our primary caregivers, usually parents, shape how we form relationships later in life. If a child feels secure and supported by their caregiver, they are more likely to develop healthy, secure relationships as an adult. On the other hand, if a child experiences neglect or inconsistency, 
they may struggle with relationships and trust later in life. This idea of the influence of early attachment has become a central aspect of many modern psychodynamic approaches. While traditional psychoanalysis often required years of therapy and intense exploration of the unconscious mind, modern psychodynamic therapy tends to be more focused and time-limited. It still involves exploring unconscious thoughts and feelings, but the therapist and client work together to understand how past experiences, particularly early relationships, continue to affect the client's present life. This approach also incorporates more of a focus on the here and now, helping individuals become more aware of their current thoughts and feelings rather than solely focusing on the past. Another key component of modern psychodynamic theory is the role of defense mechanisms. Freud originally introduced the concept of defense mechanisms as unconscious strategies the mind uses to protect itself from anxiety or uncomfortable emotions. Common defense mechanisms include denial, repression, and projection. While Freud believed that these defense mechanisms were primarily a way to manage conflicts between the ID, ego, and superego, modern psychodynamic theorists see them as broader coping strategies. They help individuals manage not only internal conflicts but also interpersonal relationships and external stressors. Modern psychodynamic theories also place greater emphasis on the social and cultural context of behavior. Object relations theory, for example, focuses on the importance of early relationships and the internal representations of others that we carry with us throughout life. This theory suggests that the way we relate to people in our early years forms a template for how we relate to others as adults. If we had positive, nurturing relationships in childhood, we are more likely to form healthy relationships in adulthood. If we had negative or harmful relationships, we may struggle with intimacy or trust. This theory highlights the lasting impact of early social experiences on personality development. In recent years, modern psychodynamic theory has also incorporated insights from neuroscience and cognitive psychology. Research into how the brain processes emotions and memories supports many of the ideas originally proposed by psychodynamic theorists particularly the notion that much of our mental activity happens outside of our conscious awareness. Neuroscience has shown that the brain processes information on many levels, and much of this processing is automatic and unconscious. This aligns with the psychodynamic view that unconscious thoughts, memories, and feelings influence our behavior, even if we are not aware of them. Despite the advancements in psychodynamic theory, it has also faced criticism. Some psychologists argue that it is too focused on the past and does not give enough attention to present circumstances or conscious decision-making. Others believe that it is difficult to test or measure the unconscious scientifically, making it less reliable as a basis for psychological treatment. However, Modern psychodynamic therapy has adapted by incorporating more evidence-based practices and focusing on improving immediate issues in the client's life. In conclusion, modern psychodynamic theories build upon the foundational ideas of Freud and other early psychoanalysts, but have evolved to incorporate a broader view of human behavior and development. These theories emphasize the role of the unconscious, early relationships, and emotional conflicts in shaping personality, but they also recognize the importance of social context and current experiences. Modern psychodynamic therapy seeks to help individuals understand how their past influences their present and develop healthier ways of coping with life's challenges. While not without its critics, the psychodynamic approach continues to be a valuable framework for understanding the complexities of the human mind.